Okay, so for this um, part, we are going to do systems of linear equations and augmented matrices. There is a relationship between systems of linear equations and matrices. The matrices are rectangular arrays of numbers. They're used to display information and solve linear equations. An augmented matrix has a vertical bar separating the columns of the matrix into two groups. The coefficients of each variable are placed to the left of the bar, the vertical line, and the constants are placed to the right. If a variable is missing, its coefficient is zero. Horizontally, those are called rows. Vertically, they're going to be columns. So a system of linear equation might look like this. The augmented matrix will look like this. So you just bring over the two, the negative three and the six, and the one, the one, and it equals to zero. In this case, we have three term, um, system, or three equations in the system. And again, it's going to be 3, 1, 2, 31, 1, 1, 2, 19, 1, 3, 2, and 25. So if we need to, we will zero fill if needed. And in um, a system that looks like this, we don't have every part. Um, so we have 1, 2, negative 5, negative 19. We don't have any x's. So we'll put a 0. There's 1 y, 3 z's, and then 9. We don't have x or y, so 0, 0, 1, and 4. So the goal is to solve the matrix to look something like this, where the last variable is solved, and then we can substitute the value to find the value of the other variables. It's just like solving the system of linear equations that we did in the last section. So in this case, the third row gives the value of the one variable, and we're just going to substitute it back in. When we do matrix row operations, Two rows of a matrix can be interchanged with the arrow going back and forth. The elements in any row may be multiplied by a non-zero number, or the elements in any row may be multiplied by a non-zero number and then added. So we really just do multiplication and addition. It just depends on what we need to do, and we're going to do some of that with some examples. And two matrices are called row equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence of row operations. All right, so now that we've kind of talked about what a matrix is, we are going to do some examples. So this will be example one. We're going to use matrices to solve the system. So here's our system, x plus 3y equals 5 and 2x minus y equals negative 4. And what we need to do is we need to write the matrix. So I'm going to have my little bracket there. I've got 1, 3, my vertical line, and 5. And then 2, negative 1, and negative 4. So first thing you have to do is write your matrix. Now. <clears throat> the first goal that we want is in row 1, we need a 1 there. That's your first goal. Well, we have a 1, so yeah, we don't have to do anything to get that. Our next goal is to get this 2 to be a 0. So we have to think about, well, how do I get 2 to become a 0? I can't multiply by 0, because if I multiply everything in here by 0, it would make everything 0, and that won't help us. So you have to think about how can I get the value that I'm trying to get. Well, to get 2 to become a 0, if I subtract 2, I get 0. 2 minus 2 would get me 0. So how can I get negative 2? Well, if I multiply row 1 by negative 2 and then add it to there, I would get negative 2 plus 2 would get me to the 0. So let's go see what that looks like. We're going to do negative 2 times row 1 and then add row 2 to get our new row 2. So you'll notice this is kind of like the notation I used before. I didn't add rows and stuff, but telling you what we're going to do on my arrow. 
um, when we did systems as linear equations, and now we're going to use similar notation to do this. So first thing I got to do is negative 2 times row 1. So that means I'm going to take negative 2 times each of those terms. So negative 2 times 1, negative 2 times 3, and negative 2 times 5. All right, so that'll get me negative 2, negative 6, and negative 10. Now, these are just individual terms because that's what they are in the row. Now, I'm going to add row 2. Row 2 is 2, negative 1, and negative 4. So, negative 2 plus 2, well, that gets me 0. Negative 6 minus 1 will get me negative 7. And negative 10 minus 4 will get me negative 14. So what you need to understand is we used row 1, but we didn't change row 1 at all. Row 1 is still 1, 3, and 5. But row 2 is changed. It is now 0, negative 7, and negative 14, which is what we needed. We got our 0 right there. Now, this part of row 2 needs to become a 1. So, how do I get negative 7 to be a 1? Well, if I take negative 7 and I divide by negative 7, that would get me 1. Because I can't do the addition part that we did before, because if I do, this won't stay 0. So you can't really do the addition on this part anymore. But if I divide by negative 7, I can get to 1. So, what I'm but I can't divide. Remember we talked about I need to either add or I need to multiply. So what I can do is multiply by negative 1 over 7. That's the same as like dividing by negative 7 times row 2 to get my new row 2. So that'll get me negative 1 7 times 0, negative 1 7 times negative 7, and negative 1 7 times negative 14. Well, negative 1 7 times 0, that's 0. Negative 1 7 times negative 7, that's 1. And negative 1 7 times negative 14 will be 2. Let's rewrite the matrix. Did not change row 1, and row 2 is now 1, 0, 1, and 2. Oh! I got what I needed. I have my 0 here and I've got my 1 there. So now the system, I'm going to rewrite our system. The system is now 1x plus 3y equals 5 and this one is 1y equal to 2. So that's the new system. I can now use that to sub in to find out what my x is. So I'm going to sub y equals 2. We've done that before with my, our systems. And we have x plus 3 times 2 equal to 5. So x plus 6 equals 5. Subtract the 6 over, and x will be equal to negative 1. So we have negative 1 comma 2 as our solution. Because we're dealing with x and y, again, we're back to doing our ordered pairs as our answer. And you can always check this back into your original equations. We could go back up here and plug our answer in to see if it makes it a true statement, if you're unsure. All right, let's go do another example. Example 2. So for example 2, our system is 4x minus 3y equal to 11 and 3x plus 2y equals 4. So the first thing we're going to do is write our matrix. We have 4, negative 3, and 11, and 3, and 2, and 4. Now remember our goals. Our goals are to get um, 
that first row one needs to be a one. So row one, the first number I'm going to use what looks like a um, hashtag, but when we were growing up, that meant the pound sign was a number, equals one. And then row two, the first number needs to be equal to zero. And then row two, the second number needs to be equal to one. So that's where our goals were on the first part. So these are going to be our goals. I've got to get four to become a three. So what can I do to get four to be a, th or not a three, sorry. I need four to get to be a one. And how can I do that is I could subtract three away from four and then I would get one. Well, I happen to have a three right here. So all I have to do is to do the subtraction, I'm going to multiply by negative one. So I actually do addition. So negative one times row two plus row one will get us our new row one. So negative one times row two will get us negative one times three, negative one times two and negative one times four, because those are our numbers in row two, that gets us negative three, negative two, and negative four. And then we'll add row one, which is four, negative three, and 11. Well, four minus three will get us one, negative two minus three gets us negative five, and negative four plus 11, or 11 minus four, either way you wanna look at it, is seven. So that's our new row one. So we have one, negative five, and seven. Row two is the same, three, two, and four. We used it, but we didn't change it. All right, now our next goal is to get this to be a one. So how can I get, I mean, sorry, it needs to be a zero. How do I get three to be a zero? I need to subtract three. So I'm going to multiply row one by a negative three and add it to row two. So negative three times row one plus row two will equal our new row two. All right, so negative three times row one will get us negative three times one, negative three times negative five, negative three times 21. So negative three, positive 15 and Oops, and that should not be 21, so sorry. That should be a seven. That's a seven. That'll get us negative 21. My mind was thinking ahead. All right, now if we add our row two of three, two, and four, we get zero, 17, and negative 17. And we write our matrix. Row one is still one, negative five, and seven. And row two is zero, 17, and negative 17. All right, next goal. We have to get the 17 to be a one. So how can I get 17 to be a one? Well, I can divide by 17, but I can't write it as division. So I can write it as 1 17th times row two. And that will get us our new row two. So 1 over 17 times 0, 1 over 17 times 17, and 1 over 17 times negative 17. That'll get us 0, 1, and negative 1. Rewrite the matrix. We have 1, negative 5, and 7, and 0, 1, negative 1. All right, we've got our goals of our first number being 1 up here our zero, and then our one. Now we can rewrite the system. So our system gets us x minus 5y equals 7, and y is equal to negative 1. So we will sub y equals negative 1 back into our equation, and we get x minus 5 times negative 1 equals 7. So 
So x, negative 5 times negative 1 will get us positive 5 equals 7. Subtract 5 and x will be equal to 2. So our solution is the ordered pair of 2 comma negative 1. And again, you can plug it back into your original function or original system.